everyone. Today we have a special guest. So I'm so glad that we have a lovely uh, guest today after this 20th uh, reunion of Harry Potter. Today we have Blake Miles. She was the double of Emma Watson in the Harry Potter series for a long time. So I don't want to give a long introduction about her because she is directly here with us today. Thank you, Blake. Welcome to the video. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to, uh, to speak to you. I want everyone to get to know you because uh, we actually, at least I can talk about this Turkish fans. We don't know much about the behind the camera, behind the uh, scene version of the like the crew and everything. Of course, we know like directors and the producers, like everyone else. But we at least know that like hundreds, thousands of people who are working in this like big, big production. I was 10 when I started um, on the films. Um, so I worked as um, Emma Watson's double or the Hermione double um, and it was, a, I went to a little after school drama class um, in sort of in the, in the afternoons and the woman who ran the drama class also had a, a very small agency and she would send people out to auditions um, and just Harry, the Hermione double happened to be one that came across her desk um, and she sent the picture of me um, and they thought that I think me and Emma have quite a similar shaped face. Mm -hmm. um, so, because I'm aware I don't look that much like her anymore, but at the time, um, I think we had a similar shaped face, similar height, similar build. So I went to Leavesden, I met with Emma and the directors and the producers. And um, yeah, they just said, yeah, great. We're just looking for somebody um, because when you're under 16 and you're working on a film set, you can only spend four hours on set. Um, so just to get as much filmed as possible in the day, they could use her for four hours and then they could use me for four hours. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and that's that's what I did. So I worked on the first three films mm -hmm. um, in, in that role. Probably most people uh, would like to ask you the same thing about the behind the magic, because, you know, yeah. we have seen so many stories like interviews and everything during the like years, maybe some mm -hmm. extra behind the scenes videos just released in like a few years back and the, in the reunion, everything probably have like more stories that we haven't heard on the media yet. It's, you know, it's a really strange thing because um, when Obviously, we first started, the, bu the books were huge, but no one really knew much about the film or how true the film was going to be to the books. Um, so I feel like we just sort of existed in this bubble that it wasn't any bigger than us just being there. And, um, you know, just it just became really normal. It just became a really normal part of life. And we did, you're right, in the studios, there's all on one end of the studios, the sound stages where we would film everything. So you'd have like the great hall and classrooms and, you know, interiors of like the borough and stuff like that. Then at the other end was like where we lived. So you're right, like we did school, we all had our dressing rooms. We had sort of, um, like a rec room, which, you know, was like table tennis and it had a big fridge full of like sweets and stuff like, you know, drinks and so stuff many like kids. that. <laughs> yeah. And we would all just hang out in this little area and it would go down to the canteen and, um, and yeah, it was just like really, we just did really normal things that children did. Um, you know, I think I always say when we were on, when we used to go on location, we'd all stay in the same hotel. Um, you know, we'd always want to go swimming and do swimming <laughs> together after we're filming. As soon as we get back, we'd like scoff down dinner to like go to the swimming pool or go to the swimming pool and then have dinner. Um, so it's only sort of being older and looking back at that, it feels like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that that was what I did and that was my life but um when we were filming I think Warner Brothers made a really big effort to make everything just feel really normal for us and not overwhelming so that my family could come with me they could come and visit the film set whenever they wanted um and that was the same with everyone you know everyone's parents would come in you know Dan would have his dad with him every day like Emma's parents would come in quite a lot Rupert's dad was with him every day like it everyone's family was was just involved and um yeah especially like over in that living area where we were all together like with the dressing rooms but there must be one moment that you have realized that oh my god this is big we didn't know it was something we were just going like the school we were having fun but 
the maybe maybe the like second or third movies premiere or something like this what was the moment that yeah. oh my god something big is going on here do you know i think um when especially when we used to film on location um if the press ever found out where we were they would obviously show up and trying to take pictures and we used to have to like wear coats like up to here so you couldn't see the school uniform and no secrets are out and i feel like that always when we were sort of outside of the studios and almost in the real world that is when i sort of think we realized like oh my goodness this is a really big deal like and almost that I felt like, oh, I'm really special that I actually even know what the school uniform and what all this stuff looks like before anybody else, because, you know, they, everyone was like desperate for any details to come out of what was happening and, you know, what things look like, where things are being filmed. And um, obviously I, I knew all that information, um, but the press were always trying to get, sorry, my dog's just barged into the room. Hello, my day. But they yeah. still just, we were all just, even, but even between the first and the second film, there was no egos ever it was always like we were all children together we were all really treated the same and um I think that's why it was why it was so lovely and a really really special time I host a podcast um called Behind the Wand um which is produced by MuggleNet which is a, a Harry Potter fandom site which I'm sure some people would have heard of um and I speak to yeah like car, a cast and crew and people I worked with and some people I actually hadn't worked with and um yeah, like you said, if you listen to a few episodes, you'll always hear that everyone says what a wonderful time they had and how it was the best thing they've worked on. And I think like testament to that is that a lot of people who worked on Harry Potter are now working on Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. So a lot of people you know, stuck with it. And I mean, if you're working on Harry Potter and you're working on Fantastic Beasts, that means you've been working in the wizarding world for like 20 years so <laughs> it must be good because you wouldn't stick it out for that long <laughs> if it wasn't. but yeah I'm still yeah every time I organize an interview for the podcast and especially if it's somebody I'm, I'm haven't seen in years or you know didn't particularly know when filming I always think oh I'm really scared you know what if they're not nice or what if they get a bit annoyed at some of my questions or something and it's going to be really awkward and um, it just never is they're just honestly I'm always just come away thinking oh my goodness that person was really lovely and gave me a lot of time and really answered the questions and you know and I guess that just filters from the top down of I guess some some of the people in Warner Brothers who sourced crew and stuff just didn't want people who had any egos or anything and just wanted nice nice people. Have you ever visited the set of the reunion? You, were you there or like have you talked to anybody about it? Because we didn't see much people uh, from the Technic uh, crew in the reunion. It was more like the director, like producers and some actors. Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't spoken to anyone who was part of the reunion, but I'd be really interested to just to see what it was like. I bet it was really bizarre. It was quite um, secret, I guess. We, yeah. nobody even know when they should it it probably be yeah. like such a big bubble to just keep the mystery and everything so yeah. how did you feel when you watch it oh it was really lovely to watch I think it was really really nice to watch and um I think yeah it just brought back loads of memories like some stuff I was thinking oh my gosh I didn't even remember that but that's true and just hearing like little stories and stuff like that and I'm I think it was like a really lovely way to celebrate the 20 years which I mean I still can't believe that's how long it is um but but yeah it was great and I think like again it was just a really good representation of what it was like working all that time on, on those on the films um but yeah, it was weird seeing everyone like grown up in the great <laughs> hall. I was thinking, oh my gosh, everyone looks so old. I'm sure we're all still 15, but we're not. Um, but yeah, it was nice. I thought they got you a really know, good group of people. You know, the, like the most stupid thing on the world that I was watching it. I saw the trailer like one month before they released it in like, you know, the new year. And I was watching the trailer and I said that, oh my God, why? They didn't have Gary Oldman on the show. I mean, he was such a like important character, the series yeah. black. And why? And you know that I have a big thing for Gary Oldman and especially for the series black character, both sides. And I was so upset when I watched the trailer. And my friend told me that he's in the trailer, I guess. I saw them. I was like, no, he was not in the trailer. He's probably Michael Gambon. 
Gary yeah, Oldman was not on the show. <laughs> <laughs> My friend told me, uh, Mine, he's probably Gary Oldman because you were probably expecting something looking like 40-ish ages. Yes. And he's and now 64 he's... at the moment. I'm sorry. I was like, yeah. so Michael Gambon is like, how many years? Oh, I know. God. I know. <laughs> I know. It's mad, that, isn't that it? Is like, oh my God. That, that, just, that, that just was the time for me. I was like, oh my God, this is Gary Oldman. That that was the moment that that just hits me. It's been like yeah, no, you yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. A few things. It was like oh, we're really grown up now and not and not young. And obviously, they look even more grown up. But I'll tell you a funny story about Gary Oldman. Um, yeah, he used to get his hair and makeup done um, in the chair next to me, and quite often would be in at the same time. Anyway, when we were filming the third film, the new book had been released and you know, J.K. Rowling had said, somebody dies, a major character dies. So obviously everyone's thinking, well, somebody's out of a job. Somebody's not coming back in a few years time because obviously everyone's contracted to keep coming back. And um, anyway, so I was like, trying to read, trying to read, trying to read. And then he just comes into hair and makeup and he was like, it's me. I've just found out that it's me they're killing off. And I remember being so upset because I hadn't got to that point of the book yet. And I was like, that's ruined. He's ruined oh, it for me. Like, like, how, how I, could you do that? How I know. Like, how could you tell me? I think I looked like really upset. He's obviously really upset as well, thinking like, well, oh. this, this comes over for me. Um, and then I, I remember saying to my mum, like, oh, I'm really upset. The book's ruined now. Like, I hadn't got to that bit. Now I know what happens. And she was like, don't worry, if it was going to be ruined for you, at least it was Gary Oldman that ruined it for you and not somebody else. I was like, that's actually very true. At least it was Gary Oldman that told me himself that Sirius Black dies. And that's how I found out. But then when I got to that bit in the book, I was like, oh, I already knew this. <laughs> wow, such a yeah. nice memory. Do you have any like any, something interesting in the set? Like maybe it will be much better for me if this is something from Pearson of Azkaban said, because, you know, Alfonso Cuaron is also one of my favorite directors. I love yeah. everything about that movie because probably the ages, you know, I was like 13 or 14 years old when I was watching this. Growing up with the characters just keeps you in this series. And today, for example, someone asks, like, asks me, why do you love this like book or movie series that much? I was like, I can't explain this to you. Today we are like 30, 30, 31 years old. I was I was just exactly at the same age with the character at that time. Do you have any like something that you can't forget? Or like if I had a chance, I would go back to that day and have much, much more fun. Any set moments? Oh, uh, do you know what? The, with Prisoner of Azkaban, what was really fun is that we all went up to Scotland to film. Um, Hagrid's hut and when Buckbeak the whole bit with Buckbeak where Buckbeak gets executed but then they actually managed to go back in time and release him and that took a lot of work and it was obviously great because they used the you know us doubles a lot for when Harry and Hermione obviously watching themselves in the past and future they were using the time down and going back um, and again like being on location is really fun um, but I remember filming um, in the Shrieking Shack and the Shrieking Shack, the set actually moves. So when you're filming in it, it really? swayed. It was just incredible. Yeah. Um, and I remember filming with um, Gary Oldman and David Foulis and Alan Rickman and that scene, you know, where they hug and they're like, you, how could you? And then like Snape comes in, all that. I remember yeah. filming that scene. And um, that was really amazing because those are three incredible actors. And I remember just being like, oh my goodness, this is so real. They're so good. Like, I can't believe you know, that they're acting it, because they're just so incredible. Even if you ask me now, right now, which Harry Potter moment you would like to just like go today, this is the exact scene that I would just, every yeah. time I watch this, I remember the moment that I watched it on the screen, on the cinema, I was like 14 years old. I went to that movie with my sister and I remember it was like the middle of the day session or something like this. <laughs> I remember the time that I saw two of them on the screen and I, I I just couldn't just like do something for like next 10 minutes because that yeah. was the moment that the movie has changed 
and like mm-hmm. everything that you know that you understand that oh that voice was like harmony's voice that oh they were just coming after the time and everything everything souls after that moment but I think it's because they just got the characters like so right and the actors like like Gary Oldman as Sirius Black like David Thewlis as like Lupin so you really love like because sometimes you fall in love with the character in the book and then that doesn't tra- quite translate onto the, the film or it's not quite the person you might have picked to play that part but I think with Prisoner of Azkaban like all the new characters they absolutely like nailed the casting you know like I like Gary Oldman a serious back is exactly who I read on you the page can't like just something better no mm. other options that was the yeah. best option yeah, yeah. So I think that's kind of why Prisoner of Azkaban's so brilliant because the casting is so so good do you see that okay that's me on the back that's me at doing this can can you just recognize it and say it when you're watching do you know it? what I used to when obviously when they first came out I definitely so much I could be like I know that's me I remember that that's me <laughs> I think like obviously as time goes on, my memory gets a little bit more hazy. I'm like, I think that was me. I'm pretty sure I did that thing. Because the thing is so much we filmed, like, you know, almost every scene that her mind is in, Emma would do some and I would do some. And then, you know, so many parts get dropped and don't make it into the final cut. If you think we're filming for nine months and every day, and that ends up being a two hour film, like there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make it. So, you know, almost every scene I would say I filmed, but whether my part, part's in it or Emma's, and then sometimes I'll think, oh, that's definitely me. And then Hermione will like turn around and I'll be like, oh no, that wasn't me. And then other <laughs> ways, like, oh no, that's not me. And then I think, oh, actually, no, maybe it was me. Or my mum will be like, no, you did film that bit. Um, Have you keep in touch with any of the like actors or like any crew? Do you know what I did? And like, I would just come back and visit. And I still went to like some of the premieres even when I wasn't in it, just because, like obviously I just knew everyone and uh, yeah. somehow managed to like work my way in um but yeah like I still speak to a few people like I, I don't speak to Emma I haven't spoken to her in years um but you know a couple of people I have on social media and you know a lot of t- the, the the weirdest thing happened the other day I was um so there was a guy called Tolga he was Harry's double for stunt double for all the films and we were really really friendly we obviously spent like every day together and even after finished filming like we live near each other and we'd still see each other anyway I must not have seen him in oh my goodness since I was 18 so about 12 maybe like 10 12 years and a couple of weeks ago I was in like a DIY shop you know where you'd buy like paint yeah. or wood or whatever and I bump into him what a weird <laughs> thing I just walked around the corner. I was like, oh my goodness, what? I mean, like, <laughs> had this like hug and this mini like Harry Potter reunion in the <laughs> in the uh, DIY shop. It was so wild, but um, who I haven't spoken to in years, which has been so, so nice. Um, one Harry Potter one page, an like, international one, posted your picture. He said like, okay, this is Flick Miles, like the double of Emma Watson in the series. I was like, okay, I, I haven't seen her before because you, we don't know too much about the cruise I just found her profile I was like maybe she can talk to us in some way let's just try that then it was so nice of you that the moment that you answered the message and you've been just trying to schedule it in like like <laughs> months maybe it's been almost like yeah, two yeah. months maybe you just take your time it's it's such a lovely lovely gesture really thank you Flick it was also so nice to meet you in person yeah, it's so lovely. No, thank you. Honestly, I love, like I say, and whenever I see tonight, I actually love Harry Potter. I love talking about Harry Potter. I love um, meeting other people that love it as much as I do. Um, so honestly, it's been so lovely to speak to you. And um, yeah, I hope we can speak again soon. I'm sure there's more for us to talk about. Just one one episode just on Prisoner of Azkaban, our love for Sarah. Let's Isabel. do this. Please, let's do this. I'm not joking, by the way. I'm not joking, by the way. This could I'm be really our not. podcast. This could be my YouTube channel. It doesn't matter. As long as we can talk. Exactly. And I'm sure that people would like to hear because there are so many fan stories from my side. You have like incredible like lovely set stories and we can really make a big fun of it for the next yeah. generation maybe as adults yes. <laughs> <Keep it going. laughs> so, of course
wonderful. No, it's been absolutely lovely to speak to you. And I hope yeah. I hope my stories have been good and you found out something new about. Thank right. you very much. It's so nice to talk to you. It was lovely Bye. to speak to you. Bye.